Vice Chairman Klobuchar, um, appreciate hearing all, all of your testimony today. Let me ask you this. Um, well, first of all, we, always, we all know that the essence of the American dream is economic mobility and opportunity to succeed. There's no doubt about that. And by most measures, Americans are better off today uh, than they have been in past decades. And there's still a significant opportunity for all individuals, low-income individual, individuals, all-income individuals, to move up the economic ladder. Um, I want to focus some of my comments as well on education, because uh, a couple of you touched in particular on that as part of your testimony, uh, and particularly the skill upgrading concept you mentioned, Dr. Kearney. Information technology has boosted the marginal productivity of high, highly skilled and college-educated workers. This has caused the real wages paid to these workers to increase more rapidly over time as the demand for them grew more rapidly than the supply. And at the same time, information technology directly competes with some generally less skilled and less educated workers, causing those real wages then to stagnate. And economists have called this phenomenon skill-based technological change and estimated that it could account for a majority of the increase in income inequality both in the United States and around the world. Um, Dr. Kern, I'll just start with you. Would you agree that skill-based technological change is a major cause of income inequality, not only in the United States but in other countries as well? Uh, y yes, I am. I am. Yeah firmly in the camp among labor economists who subscribe to this notion of skill bias technological change. Um, but it's a nuanced view. Uh, it, the computerization and information technology has certainly accentuated and the uh, skills in a positive way increased the returns to skills for the higher educated. But in the most recent decade, in the 90s, in contrast to the 80s, it actually did have some positive effects on the earnings of the lowest skilled. So, or, or I should say, you know, folks in the service sector, truck drivers have better GPS systems, for example. And where it's really hurt is right at the middle. Okay, so, and those are blue collar and white collar um, jobs that are more easy to automate, for example. Those are the jobs that have gotten hit by this skill bias technological change. To, to Chairman Brady's earlier question, I will say that while I believe that skill bias technological change and essentially the supply and demand of skills are the primary drivers of our patterns of income inequality, there is strong evidence that the erosion of the minimum wage during the 1980s contributed to the decline in low wages at the bottom during the 80s. Now, of course, in the 90s, as I mentioned, those wages rebounded without um, a coterminous increase in the minimum wage. Hey, Dr. Kerr, would you also say that education would be the most effective long-term solution to growing to that growing uh, gap between skills employers uh, that they seek and the skills that workers actually have? Yes, it's a, it's, a, it's a focused education, it's a smart education, it's an education that is committed to STEM education, right? right? And um, educating and training the students for, for the jobs of today's global economy. And Dr. Uh, Matter, maybe you can uh, add some comments, but I also wanted to ask if you actually agreed with Dr. Kearney that retaining good teachers and dropping bad teachers should be a policy that we should consider as well uh, at, at, a, at a policy level and to help with education? Absolutely. I think, you know, the more uh, we create high-quality education, the better, better off people are, the better off children <coughs> are. But again, also talking about the minimum wage, uh, you know, issue that came up. I mean, the most recent research suggests that there is, you know, there is. It's sort of not the single important thing that ca that has been responsible for income inequality. I think there is some evidence suggesting that, uh, you know, over certain time periods, the minimum wage uh, was highly correlated with uh, female wages, which is what it affects the most. But I think if you look at a long period starting in, in 1986 to 2005, there is no correlation between female wages and the increase and decline in the minimum wage. So it's not clear that that is the sort of single smoking gun that has been responsible for the rise in income inequality. Yeah. Thank you, Madam Chair. I yield back.